As a game developer, I'd like to share my opinion on the Tekken 8 store and the Tekken franchise in general. And this is all speculation. I've got no proof uh, that Namco actually did this, but uh, there are things that suggest that they might know what they were doing from the very start. Now, the Tekken games and these competitive games in general have one very, one one advantage and that advantage is that it's a very good advantage it's that uh, for the developers and the people that are basically selling the game and from business point of view is that when Tekken 8 came out everybody every competitive player and everybody had to move to Tekken 8 as that was the latest installment and you had to buy the game quickly very quickly as it wasn't a single player experience that you can experience uh, an year later, because if a year later you buy Tekken 8, most players that are playing the game will be ranked higher than you, and you will not have that chance to rank quickly and effectively uh, when you start the game. Like if you buy the game at launch, most players will be ranking up, so you'd have a chance to rank up with them, which you wouldn't be able to do if you bought the game one year later. Uh, of course, you could still do that, but it's just a little bit difficult. You'd just be like on the very back of the field where everybody else would be in front of you. So it's a little bit difficult. And um, that is one thing that Tekken 8 had going for it from the very start. It's a competitive game and people want to buy these games so they can basically rank up and move to the top at the very start. Or at least move as far as they can to the top before, you know, things just settle down and everybody gets their ranks and everything and things are things are more stable and they are more um, like everybody that has a certain skill level gets their rank after about two months of playing every single day. Uh, you get an idea of where everybody's rank is and what your skill level is. But if you play an year later, you'll probably be at the back of the field. So people had to buy Tekken 8. So it was a very good strategy on their part to release the game and get the positive reviews that they could get when the game launched because the success or the failure of a product is determined by how it's launched most of the time of course there are other games as well like um, that game which was very very popular during the pandemic uh, what was it called um i believe it was called um the game was called Among Us. So Among Us was not very successful at launch, but uh, due to some, I believe some uh, social media people, it became very popular. Um, I think PewDiePie played it, I don't know. But um, what I'm basically saying is that um, games or any product in general fails or succeeds at launch. So the Tekken 8 devs made a very good business decision by not... Uh, not implementing anything that could give them a negative review. So that's the first business decision that they took, which is, of course, business people, they do that. They basically try their best to manipulate the users and the reviewers and the critics. They try their best to do what they can to make sure that their game succeeds, even if they, what they do is unethical. And I believe that if the Tekken devs had this plan to release a store which contained microtransactions they should have told us from the very start so people that do not wish to buy a game that will contain microtransactions in the future don't buy Tekken 8. I wouldn't have bought it if I knew that uh, there were microtransactions in the game. DLC and some of the features like uh, frame data displayer I can understand if they if they wanted that to be like some premium product that's fine but for a 70 dollar game introducing microtransactions later is kind of like a i think it's it's not it's not deceiving the users it's their game they can do whatever they want with it but it's kind of like ethically questionable as uh we when we bought it we did not really know that microtransactions can be part of the game in the future and we had no idea that they were basically the Tekken 8 devs were basically delaying the launch of the Tekken store because they wanted all the positive reviews and every good thing said about them before they do that as they would they knew that they would have negative backlash like the one that they're having so 
from a business point of view, it is very smart and game developers usually do this. I work with clients and they do this all the time. They basically do not care about the user experience. They just care about how they can please the investors that have invested in the game and how much money they can make. And one of the tricks is to manipulate the users into loving their product and then introducing things which can, which they can use to make more money from their users, even if they have to manipulate their users to do that. So, uh, my opinion is that uh, the Tekken 8 store is something that game developers do and they will always do and we need to be vigilant and we need to be careful about uh, buying games in the future which do not which do not tell clearly what their roadmap is and especially the games that uh, don't try to be feature complete we should avoid those games and we should basically focus more on supporting our independent developers that are more transparent and probably deserve our money more than the more than these triple a developers do so from a business point of view what they did makes perfect sense and uh i mean I mean, I hats off to them. They basically got me. They got most other people that believed in them. They created a franchise which per people have to move. Like when the next installment comes, they have to the competitive players and the players that want to want to not feel left behind need to buy the game immediately and then you know grind and do whatever they want to to get to get to the very top. But it also means that uh, if you are if you are basically uh still on Tekken 7 well, well most people are not probably playing Tekken 7 anymore and they're moved on to Tekken 8 so they knew this that the that they will uh, they will sell copies and you know all of those things so they knew that now let's uh, focus on uh what you can do now that they got you the first thing that you can do is you simply don't buy anything from the from the Tekken shop don't buy anything they're just uh uh, they're just like cosmetic items and i do not think that any gameplay feature uh, any any gameplay feature will be locked behind a paywall i don't think so but because if it is then well they should be prepared to get a lot of like negative uh, like neg negative reviews being sent to them like uh, yeah and a lot of complaints so they won't do that so the first thing you can do is don't buy anything from the tekken shop and uh, you'll still see that the the thing that her, that that producer Harada said that they needed to continue developing the game. If all of us don't buy anything from the Tekken Eight store, they're still going to put more things into it, and the company will work just fine. You'll see that the Tekken Eight shop is just to just a strategy that game developers use to get more investment for their titles that will be released in the future that's what they do that's that's basically the plan because you always want to grow you always want to show to the investors that your company is growing you can't do that if you're if after your sales the company doesn't sell anything so that's basically my point and yeah so uh i believe that we should not buy anything from the tech and shop and we should be very careful and support our indie developers